Tom Wiley here at the Davenport Grand Hotel in downtown Spokane for the Big Sky Football kickoff. We've had one heck of a weekend already, the Hall of Fame banquet on Saturday. 14 deserving members going into the inaugural Big Sky Conference Hall of Fame. We had a kids clinic. We've had all sorts of sessions. But today is the meat and potatoes of this weekend. We're talking about media day at the Big Sky Conference kickoff. We take a look over here. We have... Every single team represented from the Big Sky Conference, from Northern Arizona all the way over to Idaho State on the other side. All 12 teams, coaches and players are represented. And of course, EW Scripps right in the middle of things. We got a partnership with the Big Sky Conference. So we're going to do a live show over the next couple hours, talk to some figures, coaches, administrators, players, and all of that. So we're going to move over here. If you take a look... This is our stage setup, kind of right in the middle of everything here. And if you don't recognize that man on the stage, that is Big Sky Commissioner Tom Wistersill. Tom W., both of us, actually, if you can believe it. So we can't even differentiate between us. Tom, thanks for joining us so Great much. to be here on Absolutely. the Tom and Tom Show. The Tom and Tom Show. We'll start with the Tom and Tom Show. Let's, let's make it happen. <laughs> All right, Tom, just, just this weekend in general. I know it's a special one for you guys, but, you know, especially the Hall of Fame ceremony two years in the making, a huge class. Just talk about how special that moment was to induct those 14 members into the inaugural Hall of Fame it class. Was, it was so exciting. You could feel the, you know, the emotion and excitement, the, the people that were there. Uh, we have tremendous history in the big sky. I mean, since 1964, um, I was amazed. When the, we, we formed the committee, they started narrowing down the names, and John Casper brought me in uh, about 30 names. He's like, what do you think? How are we going to narrow it down? I just said, good luck. I don't know how you're going to split hairs <laughs> to get to this final group, but um, it was a wonderful night, a wonderful celebration. So many different sports representative, so many schools represented. It was a, just a just a really cool thing to be a part of and to hear those stories, to see those people connecting that hadn't been around. Some of them hadn't been around the Big Sky in years, but a bunch of old coaches and older administrators there too. And it was just one of those nights. I think I'll always remember that first night of the, of the Hall of Fame. I see. You know, Tom, I know you gave the the a, a longer version of the state of the conference address this morning to some of the assembled coaches, media players. Could you give us a distillation of that? I mean, how, what, how, what is the health of the Big Sky Conference? You know, the you Big Sky is doing great. We're very fortunate. I, I love our membership right now. Ten full-time members, two affiliates in football. Um, it, it's perfect for what we want to represent out here out west. We've got great growth opportunity in our media rights. Obviously, uh, ESPN Plus has been a great partner. Scripps joining is a huge thing for us and what we're trying to do to move forward. So I'm really excited about where we're at as a league. We've got great leadership. Our presidents are wonderful people that, that care about the right things. It's about education. It's about graduating student athletes. It's about uh, playing high-level athletics, winning national championships, mm -hmm. trying to keep things in the right perspective. Um, other parts of college athletics, I think, have lost some perspective, mm -hmm. but we haven't. And, uh, and so that's, you know, that's the state of the conference right now. Really excited about this fall and getting going. It's going to be a great year. You know, there is so much volatility in college athletics right now as, as teams, conferences chase the almighty dollar. But like you said, I mean, uh, how secure should teams in the Frontier Conference feel and how secure should you guys feel with, with uh, the level of, of opportunity and play that's going on here? Yeah, you know, for us, it's about, you know, obviously there's things we can control and things we can't control. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't control what happens above us. And if the Power Five and Group of Five is going to move around and, and who knows what's going to happen with the Pac-12 and the Mountain West right now, mm -hmm. we can control what we can control. And that's to provide a great opportunity for our student athletes and our coaches to, to, to grow and be a part of what we're doing. Um, we're hopeful our membership stays solid. You know, nothing's ever guaranteed in life, uh, but, uh, but I know that our schools appreciate this level of competition. And again, it's about perspective and investment and what, you're, what, you're, what comes out of that, uh, it, it, you know, expectation. So we feel good about where we're at, and we'll wait and see what happens. I see. You know, there's a lot of front-facing uh, parts to this Big Sky football weekend. Uh, you know, the Hall of Fame, the, the media day, but there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes as well. Um, I'm going to talk with Dan Satter a little bit about a Big Sky Yule later, but uh, just tell me about some of the things that go on that maybe the media, the, the folks who are here don't see that are very important to the health of the conference. Yeah, I'm glad you're going to talk to Dan about Big Sky Yule because that's been a big initiative for what we're doing. We also uh, have other programming for our student athletes while they're here as well. We do media training with them. Um, we do some educational components, you know, mental health discussion. Uh, we also had those coaches, those assistant coaches that were here 
here with our head coaches uh, in the meeting. We're talking about scheduling. We're talking about officiating. We're talking about important things to the game of Big Sky football. And so, you know, there's a lot of different parts of this that we try to, while we're here, try to capture. Uh, and we're fortunate we got a great group of coaches uh, that are really good people. And our student athletes have been wonderful. It's always fun to be around them. And they're so excited. Everybody's undefeated right now. So every, everybody's having a great time. Uh, so there's a lot that happens here that, uh, that people don't see in the three days. Yeah, I think the tenor of a lot of these interviews going on behind me is, is optimistic. A whole Optimism, lot of fun. hope, fun. <laughs> you know, everybody's smiling. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good day right now. All right. Well, I appreciate you joining us, Tom. Thank you so much. We're going to yeah. go to break real quick. But before we do, let's take a look at some of the uh, remarks that a few Big Sky Conference football legends gave at the Hall of Fame. When I was offered a ski scholarship to Montana State, I couldn't really find Bozeman. Livingston, of all places, it was on the map. I couldn't find it in, in Norway. But um, no, it's, it's amazing. Montana State gave me an opportunity. My plan was to come and ski and, and enjoy ski jumping, get an education, and go back to Norway and, and live there for the rest of my life. And, but when, um, when Jim Sweeney gave me the chance to go out for the football team and gave me all the confidence and all the all the uh, and, and also the, the teammates that I never, I never, I was not a football player. I never was a football player. Yeah. <laughs> and Sweeney, as a matter of fact, didn't know how to, what to do with me in practice. Everybody he's coached his whole life had played football, but all the guys, the, the veterans, or the, or the team that made me feel welcome. Of course, Dennis Erickson was the quarterback and he held the football for me. It was just a fantastic experience. And no, when I came to 60 years ago. Did I think I was going to sit here today and see the bio up there and be inducted with all these wonderful people? No, that wasn't in the script. No. I never got, I never had success on my athletic skill, whatever uh, John Casper tells you. <laughs> I was a terrible athlete, um, but I, I could think the game. I think I can communicate. Uh, I think I'm fairly tough, and I think those are things you need as a coach and a player. And then what about the trait that made you most successful as a player? Uh, I think John Free said it the best. You got to have good players around you. You know, the quarterback distributes. The quarterback gets the ball to the people that are better athletes than them and lets them do the things special for you. I mean, you throw the screen for no yards, but the guy goes 80, you got an 80 yard touchdown. Uh, I think it's mainly the quarterback is the guy that is, is kind of that communicator, leadership, distributor, does the things uh, behind the scenes that can help other players, but really the other guys kind of set us up. Um, Nobody's going to compare me to Lamar Jackson or Michael Vick or anything like that, but I felt like I was able to do things I was asked to do by my head coach, Don Reed, and, uh, and we won it. 95 was a special year. Welcome back to the Big Sky Conference kickoff. I'm joined here by the head coach of the University of Montana football team, Mr. Bobby Houck. Bobby, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's great to be on with you, Tom. All right, Bobby, the first question I'm going to ask, I I probably know who you're going to answer it already, (laughs) but pick number one in the media poll and the coaches poll. Do you put any stock into that? Well, I I think we have a good team, and I I like the fact that others think that way too. But, you know, for us, the goal is always the same. We have high expectations. Um... And, and we got to go compete this fall, but I think we have a chance to have a good team. I see. You know, and uh, four years into this, this second stint with the Grizzlies, how, how do you feel that the program has grown and, and uh, developed over the years? Well, you know, we're, the preseason polls maybe would say that we're kind of back where we feel like we should be. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's been a lot of hard work. I, I think our players have worked really hard. Our assistant coaches have done a great job working things through. and. You know, it's nice to set yourself up to, to have a chance, which I think we do this fall. I see. You know, as far as uh, individual player accolades, I know they announced the preseason offensive and defensive players of the year as well. Patrick O'Connell, Buck Buchanan finalist last year. He's got a heck of a story. What was he, Division Three football Base, and baseball, baseball player? player yeah. yeah, and then comes over here. What what makes him so good? What makes you, uh, him such a good guy to have on the team? Well, he's, he's a good good dude, first of all. <laughs> uh, he's a hard worker. So those are that's a good place to start, and then he's got good at, he's got good ability. Mm-hmm. He can run, and he's he's strong, and just got great instincts. So I, I think you know we have a lot of guys on the first team All Conference preseason team, which is recognition for past play for mm-hmm. the most part. But I, I think that uh, to a man, the guys on our team they don't really care too much about all that. They want they want to win, and uh, the competitiveness on our team. Mm-hmm. 
is uh, at a high level, and, and I think that's going to pay dividends for us. I know RTD's kind of been the, uh, the, the model for this team since you came back here. I mean, is there ever an end point to that, or is it constantly yeah, evolving I mean, return to dominance? Well, you, you know, then you got to keep doing it. Uh -huh. And uh, so I think we're there. I mean, I think that's kind of been uh, accomplished for the most part, and now we're back to let, let's go play. Mm -hmm. uh, can't get here soon enough. <laughs> now, how about the other two guys you brought here to Spokane? Justin Ford, Mitch Roberts. What makes them good ambassadors for the program? Well, we, we have a lot of great guys on our team. I mean, you've been around some of them, mm -hmm. and, and we have we have really fine young men on our team. Uh, and, and those two fellows are, are great guys. They're a good example of uh, <coughs> excuse me, the people we have in our locker room. Great guys and well-spoken, and uh, you know they, they have a good view of things. And uh, it, was, it was fun having them here and giving them a, a look into all this that you and I do every year. Absolutely. I was going uh, at the kids' clinic two days ago. I know you weren't in town yet, but uh, Mitch was, was showing off his quarterback skills. I know he's a receiver, but he was a quarterback at Missoula Sentinel. Yeah, he was a good quarterback right? in high school. <laughs> I think he throws it a little better than Justin. <laughs> slightly. Good, yeah. Slightly. Uh, last question. I mean, in, in your second stint here, it does, it does seem like the conference is a lot deeper than it was, uh, you know, back when you were in the Grizzlies, uh, however many years ago it was. I mean, what, what is the difference between the Big Sky Conference now and the Big Sky Conference back when you were first at Montana? Well, there's more teams, so everybody doesn't play everybody. Mm -hmm. But um, I think the league's good. But, it, you know, you, you were here on uh, Saturday night, and, and you saw some of the coaches like Keith Gilbertson and Dennis Erickson. And, I mean, some of the great coaches in all of college football have – coach in this conference it's always been good there's been good players there's been good coaches in this league for as long as i can remember and, and even before that and now is no exception there's there's good football in the big sky conference and um i think it'll just like always it'll be a challenge this year to try to win it all right bobby thank you so much for good joining us coach Hell. appreciate it Thanks. we're going to go to break we'll be right back with more from the big sky conference football media day here at the kickoff in spokane washington Tom Wiley back here in Spokane, Washington for the Big Sky football kickoff. I'm joined by the Deputy Commissioner of the Big Sky Conference, Mr. Dan Sander. Dan, thanks for joining us today. Tom, thanks for having me, and so, we're so glad you guys are all here. Well, appreciate it. We'll start with that, actually. The Scripps Partnership. I know we're thrilled about it on our end. We get to broadcast a number of, of uh, Big Sky Conference football games. Tell me how it happened on your guys' end and, and uh, how excited you are for the partnership. Yeah, you know, I think it's the, the perfect complement to our media strategy. Uh, you know, as our fans know, last year we started with ESPN and having our games all streamed on ESPN Plus, but we were really looking to supplement that with an opportunity within our footprint, which is pretty expansive across the West here in mm -hmm. eight different states, where we could have a, a partner that, from a linear standpoint, we could add uh, a number of games for our fans to see from that perspective. So, you know, Scripps, with the, the amount of stations it has and the relationships it has across Montana mm -hmm. and across all 12 Big Sky football markets, just made a lot of sense as we looked at things and started talking uh, with John Saunders and a number of others there with Scripps. I know you're the, the point person for football scheduling as well. I mean, I'm just looking at the schedule of this event. Uh, we have, you know, interviews back there, interviews back there, and I get a headache. I mean, <laughs> tell me about what goes into scheduling uh, a Big Sky Conference football season. And you're kind of the point person for that, if I'm not mistaken. I, I get that pleasure and, uh, <laughs> you know, get a little, uh, got to make sure I blink a few times looking at the spreadsheets as we, we run that process. I mean, it's obviously a, a team process with mm -hmm. a lot of input from our schools. There are a number of things that went into it. And, you know, last year we released six years worth of schedules that start with this 22 season. So wow. we did 22 through 27. But a lot of what you're hearing, if you follow college football nationally, what some, what some of the Power Five conferences are doing, mm -hmm. we were doing a year ago in terms of looking at how can we make sure we have an even rotation so that all of our schools are playing home and away against everybody in the conference as quickly as possible, while at the same time maintaining as many of those rivalries as we can. Mm -hmm. So what we ended up settling on is that each school has two annual opponents, and then there's a rotation that evenly works its way through so that over the course of three years, every school will have a home game and an away game against every other school. And what we love to say for that is that what that means is that somebody who starts their football career in the big sky, by the time they've graduated, mm -hmm. they'll have played in every stadium in our conference. There's some pretty incredible facilities out there as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, and it's just a neat 
thing for fans too to know that mm -hmm. okay we get the chance to travel here or we're going to get to see this team come into our market and play in our stadium you know i think that's important for for fans especially as we continue to try to grow our league and with 12 programs now the ability to be able to do that in an even manner i think will work out really nicely here as we move forward dan and one thing i've been impressed about when we were kind of planning for this uh this this our, the scripts president's event you were telling us about big sky U, and it just sounds like a really really cool program in the big sky conference uh to, to mentor you know administrators coaches uh things of that nature tell me about the big sky U program how it started and, and uh, what's happening here at the big sky kickoff behind the scenes so two years ago when we were in the, the thrust of the pandemic starting and we knew we weren't going to be playing games in the fall we really wanted to do something for our membership and those we serve you know in the conference office that's really our responsibility our student athletes number one first and foremost but also our coaches and our administrators and with no games right there was just this void of what people in college athletics do uh -huh. so we looked at it as a professional development opportunity virtually of course then to create this program that we call Big Sky U. And so we had three different tracks. We had one for student athletes who aspire to be coaches or administrators, right? Mm -hmm. They want to work in college athletics one day. We have one for assistant coaches, and this is across all sports at all of our schools, assistant coaches who aspire to become head coaches someday in their respective okay. sport, and then one for administrators at all of our schools who aspire to become athletic directors. Mm -hmm. So we did virtually program, virtual programming with them for two years uh, we had two different sessions, of course, right, with different classes, if you will, that um, they had to apply or be nominated by their schools. But then, you know, as we got to this point and wanted to keep things fresh, we realized, I think it's time, let's try this in person. We've gotten to that point where we felt comfortable with it. So each of our football programs invited one of their assistant coaches to be here this weekend at our Big Sky kickoff mm -hmm. for our pilot in-person programming. And, you know, another twist of this program that we're really excited about is not just the component of helping them advance their career, but also thinking about this really globally from a diversity and equity perspective. Mm -hmm. And knowing that there's a number of underrepresented populations, especially relative to when you look at the student athlete population. Yeah, so that was something that was a, a part of this Big Sky initiative here this weekend where each of our football programs sent a black or other underrepresented group assistant coach here. They went through a full day yesterday of programming, everything from how you interview for a job to they sat in on our head football coaches meeting. Mm -hmm. They did mock interviews with our athletic directors. They did a session with our coordinator of football officials to talk about how a head coach interfaces with officiating in the game, mm -hmm. after a game, out of season. Uh, just try to really expose them to so many of the other elements besides the X's and O's that go into being a head coach. Mm -hmm. They did some roundtables with our current head coaches, including our two new head coaches who really could speak from, I was just in your seat you know, uh -huh. less than a year ago, and here I am getting ready to coach my first season. Here's everything I've learned that even though I had been preparing for this opportunity, until you're exposed to it, you don't know fully and understand it until you live it. So it was just a really great chance, I think, for us to have them here in person, do some development before the season, before their camps open, but hopefully help prepare them for that next step in their career as they all aspire to become head coaches. Incredible stuff. Dan, thank you so much for, for joining us here. This is Dan Satter, Deputy Commissioner of the Big Sky Conference. We'll be right back with more from the Big Sky Media Kickoff Day. Welcome back to the Big Sky kickoff here in Spokane, Washington, the Davenport Grand Hotel. Joined now by Brent Vegan, head coach of the Montana State football team in his second season. And boy, your first season was a doozy. I know. <laughs> a trip to the national championship game, uh, a deep run in the playoffs, all kinds of storylines. Have you had a chance to breathe? I know you, you got the job, what was it, last December it was? Uh, last February. Last so, February. So. Jumped right into recruiting, jumped right into yeah. spring, jumped right into the season. You had an off season. Have you, have you caught your breath? Oh, a little bit. I think uh, you get back to where this is more of a regular regular cycle. And I think as coaches, um, that's part of what we enjoy. It, it, every year, once you establish yourself, I guess, within a program, um, 
you know, over the course of summer, you have a chance to, to decompress a little bit, but it's always on your mind, and this part of the, the summer becomes this, uh, you know, super exciting time because uh, fall camp's right around the corner, and it's the, the beginning of, of, obviously, what you do all the hard work for as we get into September and, and get into the season. I see. You know, preseason polls came out. I think they had you number two in coaches, uh, number three in coaches, number two in the media. Uh, do you put any stock into that stuff? Not really. No, no I, I think, uh, you know, every every team is new this year. Um, I think the, the coaches' polls are reflective of this guess between what you were last year and what you're trying to become. The, mm -hmm. the, the media is certainly the same. And I know we're, we're, we're at or near the top, and those those – those points are real close, but um, you know, out of all the matters, is how those, those standings sort out through the course of the fall. I see. You know, you brought Tommy Mallott here, a sophomore quarterback from Butte, Montana. Uh, he was kind of thrust into the spotlight last year. Was a backup, then had a magical run in the postseason. But it just seems like his his head's just on his his shoulders correctly. How, how has he handled that spotlight? I think he's handled it uh, remarkably well. And, and, you know, what you see with, with Tommy is, is what you get. He is, is, uh, is pure, um, a competitor, um, a, a leader. Um, you know, his willingness to give back to, to, to Bozeman, to Butte, to the state of Montana, mm -hmm. to young kids, in, in, you know, in all those areas is real. You know, I, I think every time he gets a chance to... Um, touch someone I think he recognizes there might be a young Tommy Mallott out in that crowd you know and that's all that's all uh, part of um, what we hope our leaders and our uh, most recognizable players are and I, I know as a competitor uh, you know I, I think he he certainly flashed in December um, taking us to the national championship game but I think he recognized there's things that he he uh, needed to improve upon and he's worked uh, tremendously hard not only coming back from that injury but then uh, going through spring and summer to become a better quarterback um, as we hit the field in September. I see. You know, Isaiah Fonse, another uh, preseason all-conference selection, had a heck of a year last year. I mean, broke the, 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 the Bobcat record uh, for rushing yards. Uh, but he put on a lot of miles. I know it took yeah. its toll as well. How is his recovery going and do you take a different approach with it all this year? Well, um, he is on the back half of his recovery, so mm -hmm. we're still um, kind of in a month-to-month -month mode with him. You know, his his postseason surgery became a, a much later surgery than it would have had we not had the run. So you, you take the good with the bad. Mm -hmm. um, we've had to, you know, beef up that position uh, group for sure. We mm -hmm. brought in Kagan Williams. We uh, we returned Lane Sumner, Elijah Elliott. We have an incoming freshman, Jared Scott, coming in. Coming in um, Jared White, excuse me, um, but. You know, Isaiah will be back for us at some point, um, but we hope we're not as uh, dependent on one guy as we were last year. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably the biggest thing coming out of that. Uh, Isaiah answered the bell continually um, through the course of last year, and ideally our um, our carries would look a little bit more spread out. So we'll see how that will play out uh, as we lead into these next months. Gotcha. And lastly, could you just give us a – brief overview with the Bobcats as we, as we get approach fall camp here. Um, what are some of the question marks you'd like to see answered before you guys hit the field? Well, I think it starts with uh, the line of scrimmage. You know, we lost uh, four starters um, in the offensive line, three on the defensive line. Um, we played a lot of guys in addition to those, those starters. You know, so seeing the new guys emerge, because for us, you know, how we play up front on both sides of the ball is where it starts. You know, our ability to, to move the move people on offense is critical. Our ability to get after the quarterback and hold the point is, is big on defense. And we have a lot of guys that are competing for those spots. Mm -hmm. And that's the enjoyable thing uh, about an, on August. There's some questions that need to be answered. But I, but I do think we have guys that, you know, are hungry for those opportunities mm -hmm. and uh, look forward to seeing it play out. All right. Coach, thank you so much for joining yeah, us. For I, sure. I appreciate it. Good luck this season. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we'll have much more with the from Big Sky Conference kickoff media day in Spokane after the break. Welcome back to Spokane, Washington for the Big Sky Conference football kickoff here. I'm joined by my boss's 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 <laughs> boss. This is Brian Lawler, Lawler uh, head of the local media division for the Scripps Networks. And, uh, Brian... 
we were talking a little earlier, this is a huge deal to, to partner with the Big Sky Conference. It's something that Scripps hasn't done before. Tell me about how it came to fruition and, and how thrilled we are to be a part of this partnership. Well, uh, I'll start with we're thrilled. We're really <laughs> excited. I mean, you know, the, the uh, importance of Big Sky on the national uh, scale, but especially in some of the markets, you know, uh, that we do business. And, and this came around because over the last couple of years, our company's been pretty active in acquisitions. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been able to cobbled together a footprint now with 61 TV stations around the country, but a big footprint out here. And so oftentimes you don't have a, you know, the stations in the right market that might complement a conference. In this case, you know, we've got five markets in Montana, we're in Arizona, we're in California, two markets in Idaho. And so suddenly Scripps looks a lot like um, the Big Sky Conference. And so with that, you know, our, our, our stations in Montana have had previous relationships with some of the teams and the conference. And so uh, we had an opportunity to sit down and, and and begin a conversation and we realize that you know what they're looking to accomplish what we as a company believe in and um, you know building community creating excitement sports is a big part of that um, it really uh, you know kind of came together pretty easily you know a lot of these these small schools have have rabid fan base oh, yeah. I mean uh, <laughs> I, I don't know when you acquired the the Montana stations if you really understood you know how much Montana follows the Montana State Bobcats or the Montana Grizzlies have you started to learn that what have you learned this oh, weekend yeah. here in Big Sky well, well I can tell you I learned it last year because I went to the Montana uh, Montana State game in Missoula oh. and uh, that was quite a game um, I learned that you know in a state like Montana where there's not pro sports, that was by far the biggest event of the year. Mm -hmm. And so to be there, to feel the energy. I also realized, man, those fans don't like each other. I couldn't believe how much uh, there was, you know, there's pretty good digging and a, a lot of animosity and a great competitive spirit. So um, <laughs> being there, being in that stadium, a hell of a football game, it was a lot of fun. What can folks expect when they turn on a Scripps broadcast this fall to watch the, the Montana State uh, Bobcats, Montana Grizzlies, or any of these big sky football yeah, look, teams? I, I think what you're going to see is two things. Number one, obviously, you know, we're going to be able to broadcast some of the, the biggest games of the Big Sky Conference. And so we look forward to you know, um, engaging with uh, local fans, showing them the support, getting them excited about their schools and their communities. But I think beyond that, events like this, telling stories, introducing these student athletes, mm -hmm. talking about what great kids they are and what, how they're giving back and what they've overcome to get there. And, you know, um, that I think is as important to just showing the games, to really showcasing, you know, these great student athletes and, and what they stand for and, and how they contribute to their communities. I think those stories are probably what really got us excited. Absolutely. Brian, thank you so much yeah, for joining continue us here. Pleasure, Brian. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back with more from Big Sky Football Kickoff Media Day here in Spokane, Washington. Welcome back to the Big Sky Kickoff Football Media Days. Now, we've talked to some coaches, we've talked to some administrators, and we also talked about some of the events that are happening this weekend. Of course, we had the Hall of Fame on Saturday night, Media Day today. But Saturday afternoon, all the student athletes here involved in the Big Sky Football Kickoff went to North Central High School in Spokane, Washington, and mentored about 100 local kids in the pigskin arts. Let's take a look at that event. From Y'all ready? Y'all ready? I need one line right here. Break! There you go, there you go. What is it, what is it? Yes, sir, uh-huh. <laughs> Break! There you go, there you go. I need it. Yes, sir. Go! Break! Here you go. Yes, sir. Straight to one. This guy! 108, so you took it from the very back of the end zone? Yeah, on this, all the way. On this field. On this field? Oh, so this is your home section right here. Ah. Uh, they don't want us to be great. That's a bad, <laughs> yeah, how old are you? You're 10? You've been playing football half your life. See if we can get it in the air. You put the hands behind your back. Let me see the gloves. Those are fire, bro. Easy. My 40? Come on, man, you know I'm 4'3". What what's your 40 looking like? 4'8"? Here we go. Oh, did the cat wait. The superstar, you're gonna be a superstar. You gotta be able to be in front of the camera at all times and perform. It looked like when the camera was right there. Look, you get another chance. There we go. Receiver group. We're just gonna start off single file line. We're gonna go over the route tree. Ready, go. Oh, good grab. Gosh, you're tall. How tall are you? Whew. Oh, man. 
His hands are bigger than mine. Now you're just gonna break in and keep running flat, okay? Right, I'm gonna throw it up to you. Go get it. Nice. All right, who wants to play defense? Me. Ready, go. And it on a good one. Oh, good breakout. All right, break it down. Big Sky on three. One, two, three. Big, Big sky. sky. Nice work, guys. Yeah, so as you can see, this weekend a lot more about just the X's and O's of football breaking down the media, coaches, polls, things of that nature. Uh, when we come back after the break, we're going to have a wider look at the Big Sky Conference and the FCS as a whole with one of the preeminent FCS analysts in the entire nation. We'll be right back. Hey, we're back at the Big Sky Conference football media kickoff. I don't know, I, I keep saying that wrong. I think it's the Big Sky football kickoff media day, but it's a really cool event, and we are joined by uh, probably the, the, the foremost expert on FCS football in the entire nation, in my humble opinion. <laughs> it's Mr. Sam Herter. He's the senior FCS analyst at, at Hero Sports. Sam, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. I appreciate you having me. This is a lot of fun. Oh, of course, Sam. Appreciate it, man. And, uh, you know, we've had a chance this morning. They released the media and the coaches' polls for the Big Sky Conference. And it's always wild to look at the top 25 and then look at the, the, the polls for the conferences. You know, you have like a team that's in the top 25 and picked to finish sixth. They're seventh in the conference. Do, do you feel like the media and the coaches got it right when you look at the, uh, the polls behind us? Yeah, I, I think so, especially the top three. Um, I think a lot of people are looking at Montana, Montana State, Sac mm -hmm. State, uh, as well as being that top three in, in any one order. Honestly, I, I kind of feel like all three of those are going to go 71 in conference play and have like uh -huh. a three-way top, uh, a three-way tie at, at the top of the standings. That just seems like most years there's usually a tie at the top of the Big Sky football standings just because of the schedule. But I think a lot of people look at those three teams mm -hmm. um, as the top three ones. Yeah, and, and clearly, uh, you know, they, they've historically been some of the top teams. Maybe yeah. not Sacramento State for a long time, but they've kind of clawed their way back to the top of the Big Sky Conference. But, uh, you know, when, when you look at the storylines in the Big Sky Conference, what, what, what kind of stands out to you as we head into the 2022 season? I think it's just capitalizing off of last season's success, um, you know, getting five teams into the playoffs. You know, I think five is probably an inaccurate number again for this year. If the Big Sky gets six, I'd be a little surprised because that rarely happens. The Valley mm -hmm. had it happen. The CAA had it happen a few years ago. But getting six, you know, that's 25% of the playoff field. So, so that, that's tough to do. But uh -huh. I think getting five into the playoffs uh, is, is probably sustainable again. But, you know, what do you do when you're in the playoffs? You know, can you get uh, even more teams into the quarterfinals? Can you get multiple teams in the semifinals? Can you get another team to Frisco to play for a national title. So I think that's just the, the storyline is the Big Sky has made improvement year after year. Now, can they continue that improvement and take it to the next level? I see. You know, when you look at a, a broad view of, of the FCS, I mean, there's there's constantly teams, you know, who make deep runs in the postseason who might move up to a to the FBS level. Uh, you've seen all the volatility in, in college athletics at the highest levels. W where is Where does the FCS stand right now? Is it in a healthy spot? Uh... I think I think it is. Uh, it kind of depends on what your definition of, of healthy is. Mm -hmm. um, I think in terms of just the FCS, like as a subdivision, I think it's healthy. There's 130 teams uh, for the most part. Uh, you know, kind of like-minded institutions. I know Tom Wishersill, you know, mm -hmm. said that. And I think just the FCS in general as a subdivision is healthy because it's not going away. You know, it's mm -hmm. there's always a spot for teams that are universities that want to be Division One in all athletics and they want to have a Division One football team, but they don't want to you know, spend $10 million a year, you know, supporting their football team. So I do think it's healthy in that sense. Uh, I do think there is, you know, something to be said about the top heaviness of the FCS. Wow. There's such a divide between the top tier and the second tier and even the bottom tier where you have some conferences that don't offer scholarships, some conferences that offer partial scholarships, and then you have North Dakota State, Montana, Montana State that operate like their FBS programs. And so there is that divide there where I feel like maybe that is getting a little unhealthy, especially with the FBS move-ups. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, you know, the FCS, is, it's always going to be around. There's always going to be a 2014 playoff, maybe 2018 playoff one day. Who knows about that? But um, I think overall it, it's in a decent spot. I, I just think more teams need to get to that top tier. Gotcha. You know, and uh, I follow along your work on Hero Sports. You, you do a lot of incredible things. The, the jersey countdown, I know that's a, a pretty uh, popular thing you guys do on Hero Sports. It's also imagine takes a lot of work, but just what's a, a fall in the life of Sam Herter, <laughs> FCS sports analyst, look like? 
uh, during the fall yeah. season. So it's, uh, I, I usually have about five to six screens going from 11 a.m. in the morning to 10 p.m. at night. Usually Big Sky games are, are on later at night. And so it's just it's trying to pay attention to all the top teams, trying to pay attention to all the top 25 games and also you know other teams, too, that may not be ranked uh, in the top 25 games that will impact the playoff pitcher. Even if it's week one, you know those games can sometimes impact the, the playoff pitcher. So just trying to pay attention to all of it, trying to tweet about all the teams. You know, sometimes it's funny. I'll... You know, there might be a, the number 25 team as being the number two team in the country at halftime and I haven't tweeted about it yet. All of a sudden, the fan from that number 25 team was like, hey, look at our score. Why aren't you tweeting about us? So it's like, all right, I'm getting there. I'm trying to tweet about all these games going on right now. But it, it's a lot of fun uh, covering this level, and I'm you know, really thankful to be able to do it. Sam, I appreciate you joining us. We'll uh, see you, I'm sure, sometime in the fall in either one of these. Uh, we'll have the schedule up there a little earlier, Montana yeah. State, Montana football game. Uh, we'll be right back. We're going to try to talk to some student athletes in the second hour of this live show from the uh, Big Sky Football Kickoff Media Day. I think I said that right for the first time this thing. Sam, thanks for joining us. We'll be right back. Thank you. Yeah, welcome back to Spokane, Washington, the Davenport Grand Hotel for the Big Sky Football Kickoff Media Day. All right, I got there's a lot of words involved in this, the Big Sky Football Kickoff Media Day. I'm joined by one of my best friends, uh, also one of my closest colleagues, Mr. Kyle Hansen. It's works good to at see a you. K-Pax for MontanaSports.com, kind of running that stuff. Kyle, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Yes, good to see you guys as well. Yeah, I got here a little later than everybody else, but it's so nice to be here finally. You know, it's starting to feel like, you know, football season's finally right around the corner, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're on stage talking to some administrators, coaches, players, but in some of these back rooms over here, Kyle Hansen and Ashley Washburn are doing some other kind of work. Tell me about what's going on behind the scenes today. Yeah, absolutely. So it's really cool. We're getting a chance to have one-on-ones with every coach and two players, the two player representatives from each university here and getting a chance to kind of talk to them one-on-one, get a look at like, you know, maybe some uh, looks at last season, look at this season, schedules, you know, who's coming back for some of these programs. And, you know, we're kind of just getting rolling with that. I just got a chance to speak with representatives from Weber State, which was great. You know, Weber State's obviously a perennial power here in the Big Sky Conference, and it was kind of interesting to get their take on, you know, the polls and where they're at because last year they had a little bit of a dip- disappointing season, and now, you know, expectations are pretty high for them. Even coming off of that, people think they're going to be pretty good this year. Yeah, if you look behind us, we have the uh, preseason media polls. Is there anything that stands out to you when you look at these things? Uh, you've had a chance to, to kind of peruse the coaches and media's poll the past few days. Sure. Well, you know, it's a really interesting, obviously, both the Montana schools being one and two. I know a lot of Montana and Montana State fans always look at that and say, you know, everybody wonders when's going to be the inevitable Montana, Montana State National Championship game, which who knows mm-hmm. what would happen in the Treasure State if that ever happened, you know what I mean? And it just shows kind of where the programs have grown, especially MSU coming off the runner-up finish, Montana continually getting back in the postseason. But I mean, you look at the top half of this league and any one of these teams could win it. I mean, you have Davis and Eastern and Weaver who all have regular season titles to their names in like the past, I believe, like five or six years and, and Sac State as well as one of the last two years. So, mm-hmm. you, you know, any of these teams can win it. You know, I look at, just talking to Weaver State, they play the top seven teams outside of themselves. Yeah. So if they're going to win the league, they have to prove it. But if you beat everybody, you definitely do prove it. So, I mean, it's a very strong top half of the league for sure. And a lot of those teams, like I, like I said, any of those teams can win it. And obviously, Sac State, two-time defending champ at number three, you know, don't sleep on them because they could definitely do it again. I see. How about the preseason all-conference team? That was released earlier this morning, too. You had a chance to look at that. Is there anything that stands out to you? Well, it is interesting. You know, when I look at Montana State, obviously, coming off the runner-up, they have the, the leading the most with seven. Sac State, who won it all last year, them and the Grizz each have five. I think that kind of stands out a little bit just because I think Sac State's maybe kind of getting some of that respect that they've earned, you know, over the last two years, especially with them being so good. Troy Taylor, their head coach, 15-1 and one in Big Sky Conference play. And, you know, you just you can't make that up. He's beating the Cats. He's beating the Grizz. You know, the I think they've beaten Eastern Washington. So, you know, it's really cool to see Sac State kind of get some of that recognition as well, on top of seeing, you know, Montana State getting all that from their runner-up finish from last season. All right, Kyle, thanks so much for joining us. So yesterday, Sunday, uh, in the morning, all through the afternoon, about five hours straight, we had players walking into one of those ballrooms in the Spokane uh, Grand Davenport Hotel. We did photo shoots. We did video shoots. Let's take a look at some of the cool footage we got from those guys.
All right, welcome back to Spokane, Washington for the Big Sky Football Kickoff Media Day. We are joined by one of the newcomers in the Big Sky Conference. Well, not a newcomer, newcomer this year, but you've been yes. involved in the Big Sky Conference before. It's uh, Jason Eck, head coach of the University of Idaho Vandals. This is the point of the show where I say that I am a Vandal alum, so I, I appreciate you coming on and joining us. Vandal alums are everywhere. It's great <laughs> to see guys doing well professionally like yourself. Amen, amen. It's, uh, you know, they set me up pretty well, and, and I'm happy to be back here in this capacity chatting with uh, a for another Idaho. Uh, Vandal, and if you could tell us about the program, what is your goal, your vision for this first year with the Idaho Vandals? You know, we're, we're building, so really the biggest focus this year is focus on getting better. We got to keep improving and, and having things in place, and I, I think it goes both ways. You know, we're going to have adversity. We're mm -hmm. probably not going to go 11 and 0 in the in the first year, so we got to make sure that I think we have a lot of positive energy going it right now. Guys are really working their tail off and getting better, and we got to make sure when we have adversity that we keep that going. We can't have hang our heads when we have adversity, and uh, I think it goes the other way as well. You know, when you were in school, you know, they had that great season in 2009, mm -hmm. uh, but they weren't able to capitalize that and keep the momentum going. So uh, when we when we beat somebody we shouldn't, and everybody tells us how good we are, we can't listen to that either. We got to get back <laughs> to work on Monday and, and keep fixing things and keep getting better. And so that's the biggest uh, focus is focusing on improvement. This Sure. I mean, obviously, historically, Idaho's had a lot of success in the mm -hmm. Big Sky Conference. If you look back in, in, in those days, you know, pre-2009, obviously, that was a, a really great year. I remember that bowl game. That was, was I'm sure, a lot of fun to watch. But what will it take to kind of get back to that level that Idaho is used to being at? Well, I, I think we're having a little bit of a change in the recruiting philosophy. And, again, I'm, I'm the first coach who's been hired since we've been back in the Big Sky. Mm -hmm. So I, I think one of the neat things in FCS football is the uh, the regional rivalries and, and we're really trying to make an impact in the northwest and, and recruiting get more and more guys who are within driving distance to moscow and i think the neat thing about that is you know now with the, the regional rivalries it's, it's fun if kids come to play at idaho not only can they're if they're in driving distance not only can they come to the games in moscow but it's easy for them to come over to missoula when we mm -hmm. play there or to, or to eastern washington or bozeman and i think that's a special thing but we, we got to keep getting better with uh our execution, you know, that's my big message to the kids. I think our effort has been great, mm -hmm. uh, but effort just gives you a chance. You know, you're, you're, uh, there, there's all the best teams in FCS, all the best teams in the Big Sky are going to play with great effort. It really comes down to execution when you're playing other good teams. Yeah, Coach, can you tell me about the two guys you brought here from, from your roster? What makes them such good ambassadors for the program? Why did you bring them up here to Spokane? You know, there, there are two captains, and it really stood out to me when we voted for captains that you know, we had about 85 players in the roster in the spring, mm -hmm. and these guys got – like 79 of the 85 votes. So they're, they're universally respected by their teams. Favai Favai is, is definitely an emotional leader. He's mm -hmm. vocal. You know, if you're at one of our practices, you feel him out there. <laughs> uh, your Mike linebacker needs to be a great communicator because he's making all the calls, setting the fronts, and uh, he's got a lot of passion on a daily basis. And then, you know, when your leadership comes from your own line, I think you get a chance to be really good. That, that's always been my specialty as assistant coach was the offensive line. And Logan Floyd is, is, a, is a great worker, very well respected. And, you know, I think the whole team kind of rallies around when, when they know the O line is really pushing and working. Mm -hmm. And that's even in the summer when they're running sprints. A lot harder to run a 100-yard sprint when you're 300 pounds than when you're 185. So I think when they when our players see that and they see the O line guys pushing, uh, it goes a long way. And Logan is a very smart player. Uh, he, he's graduated. Really, both of those guys have graduated already and playing as grad students and, and really provided great leadership to the squad. Yeah, we kind of got a look at that yesterday during our photo and video shoots in one of those back rooms. Uh, Favai was probably the best dancer I think we saw. Uh, he was getting after it. He was coordinating his own stuff. And, and, and Logan brought his cowboy boots, I think, and was kind of showing us some of the, the musical choices that he likes. So, uh, Coach, I appreciate you joining us. Uh, good luck this season. And we will we'll see you at some of these broadcasts. We had them up there just a bit ago. And, uh, yeah, good luck this season, Appreciate Coach. you guys. Coach. Thank you. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Jason Eck, head coach of the Idaho Vandals. We'll be right back with more from the Big Sky Conference kickoff football media day. Yeah, Tom Wiley back here in Spokane. We're going to change it up for the second hour of this live show. Hit some of the tables featuring student athletes. Right now, uh, I am joined by Northern Arizona football players. We got Anthony Sweeney. What's your position, Anthony? I play defensive back. All right. Actually, you know what? We got to get a microphone, don't we? All right. I'm going to, I'm going to run over here. Paul, follow me real quick. All right. Here's what we're doing. This, we're keeping this loosey. We're keeping this goosey. We're getting that microphone. Check it out. Watch this. See, this is the fun hour. We get to do cool things like that. All right. Hey, guys. All right. <laughs> okay. Anthony Sweeney, 
Jonas Leader, tell us a little about yourselves if you could. Yeah, um, my name is Anthony Sweeney. I play defensive back for Northern Arizona University. Um, entering my last year, just super excited to get going. Super excited to get going. Got a lot of things we're trying to accomplish this year, so very excited to start playing ball again. My name is Jonas Leader. I play uh, right tackle over at Northern Arizona University um, from Tucson, Arizona, and I'm also entering my last year, ready to get it going. I see. Now tell me about the, the Northern Arizona Lumberjack program. Uh, you know, I know you guys have had some great recruiting classes over the past few years, maybe underachieved slightly. What, what is 2022 going to look like for the Lumberjacks? Um, you know, personally, we're, we're, we're coming for it all, you know. Um, I, I don't think that there's a team that's put the work that we have in. Um, we're, we're coming for everything, and that, that means we're going to make a, a deep playoff run. We're, we're taking home the Big Sky Championship trophy, um, so we're really excited. It's just been a complete culture change around around NAU. You know, um, we've uh, done some player-led stuff. Uh, our team is player-led now, you know. Um, mm -hmm. The coaches have, like Sweeney's been saying all day, coaches gave us the keys, and, and we're making some big changes over there. Yeah, just to echo what Jonas said, um, you know, we're coming for everything this year. Uh, it's player-led. I think that's been the biggest thing for us. Um, coach gave us the keys to, to lead the team. We have a, a, our leadership council, and now they can focus on coaching. You know what I mean? That's what they're here to do is to coach. So I think uh, that's the biggest thing for us. And, and just not to, you know, be repetitive here, but just like Jonas said, you know, we're excited to get back in the season. We're excited to get going. We have some big goals uh, for our team this year. All right, now I was uh, looking at, you know, the, the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Were you guys there for that on, on Saturday so, night? Yeah. A couple cross-country runners uh, from Northern Arizona getting inducted into it. You know, uh, uh, practicing at elevation for runners, I'm sure, is great. What's that like for football players? I mean, Flagstaff's pretty high up there. Yeah, uh, it's, it's different, <laughs> um, especially when we get our, our pads and everything on. We are at 7,000 feet, so that's something that, you know, we, we practice hard. Uh, we run hard. Um, you know that's an advantage for us when teams come down or come up from you know being down in the valley or or um you know down at sea level that's a big advantage for us so mm -hmm. uh we take that serious um we practice hard uh and and in the long run that that's a, a big advantage for us uh yeah just kind of go off what sweeney said um uh it's a big advantage you know these teams bring the oxygen you know what i mean um <laughs> But, uh, yeah, and especially as a big guy, you know, I'm, I'm 310 pounds, you know. So when, when, when we're running and we go hard in practice, so it, it does get taxing at times. But, you know, you get used to it after a couple of weeks. You know, I've been up there for going on six years now. And um, so I'm there. We're ready. You know, it's going to be great. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Uh, I think there was a $47 million athletic center that just opened in northern Arizona. Uh, did it just open? I mean, is this like a brand new facility? And what's it like? Could you explain it to me? Describe it? So um, basically, we uh, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a big facility. Um, it's been open uh, to us all summer. Um, it's been awesome. You know, it's a blessing that we get to experience it for our last year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a, it's a weight room, a nutrition station. All our academic centers are in there now. Um, you know, it, it's been awesome. The new weight room that we got in there is something special. You know, we've been and it allows us to put in a lot more work because we have more tools now, you know, mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. to, to lift with and stuff like that. So it's been a blessing all around. We always, you know, we make this joke, you don't have to leave the new facility. Anything you want to do is at the new facility. we got a great nutrition station, a great athletic training program um, station in there. So, you know, we live in there as athletes, as student athletes. Not just the football team, but, you know, we have an elevation room for our runners and everything mm -hmm. in there. So, uh, yeah, we always joke, you don't have to leave the new facility for anything. I imagine that'll help with recruiting as well, right? I mean, you guys are in your last year, but going forward, that's got to set up the Lumberjacks for a lot of success and a lot of uh, uh, attracting some young talent. Yeah, big time mm -hmm. recruiting piece. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I got some fun questions I'm going to ask you guys cool. as well. So I'm just going to pick one randomly off this. We're going to say, does your current car have a name? Do you guys have a car? What kind of cars do you drive? I drive a 2013 all-black Kia Optima. Doesn't have a name, though. If it's you just, could name it, what would it be? Oh, I don't I don't know. That's a tough one. I've never <laughs> even thought about that. You're putting me on the spot here. I think Jonas has a name for his car. Yeah? Though. Yeah. I actually do not. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I just got a 20, 2015 Cadillac ATS. Um, do not have a name for her, though. It is a her, though. <laughs> <laughs> it is a her. It is a her. She purrs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> What's your favorite sandwich? Why? Um, number 26 from Jersey Mike's, uh, Chicken Bacon Ranch. Hey, man. Yep, All yep. right. 
We do it Mike's way with the, the juices and everything. Yeah, I was going right. to say, if it's not a California club from Jersey Mike's, it's a 99. That uh, Big Kahuna uh, cheesesteak. So that's that's the Big one. Big Kahuna cheesesteak. It's not on the menu. Just ask for a 99 with extra Chipotle mayo. That's Is that the a one. Jersey Mike's? Yeah, Jersey okay. Mike's. Okay, yep. I'm from mm-hmm. Great Falls, Montana. Okay. We just got a Jersey Mike's. Yeah, yes, sir. So now i got to write this down. you got to write that one down. Big Kahuna cheesesteak yes, and get sir. that if it's a secret mm-hmm. menu item. Yeah. All right, uh, Anthony, Jonas, thanks so much for joining us here. We're going to talk you. with some more student athletes here in a bit. Let's go to break real p- quick. We'll be right back Thank from Spokane, Washington with the Big Sky football kickoff media day i'll say it right one of these times hey welcome back to spokane for the big sky football media kickoff day we're going to be working our way around some of these tables talking to student athletes right now i'm at the northern colorado bears table we got david david hogue correct Okay, and Dylan McCaffrey. All right, gotcha, gotcha. Now, I've actually had a little bit of experience with both of you so far this weekend. On Saturday, I had a chance to mic you up at the kids' clinic. David, could you tell me how fun that was, working with some of the local kids, sell a hundred of them here? That was very exciting, you know. It was an opportunity for me to meet a lot of kids, and for that, I'm thankful for because um, I know how how exciting it is as a little kid to meet a bunch of football players and a bunch of athletic people. So for me, it was it was amazing, for sure. I see, man. And, and Dylan, uh, you know, we, we, we call it the car wash, actually, is what, what happened Sorry. yesterday. We had some video. We had some photos. Mm-hmm. We were in that room. We were blaring music. And, you know, I, I uh, personally don't, didn't recognize much of the music for much of the day. Yeah. And then you got in there and you played something a little different, right? Yeah. You know, I was uh, I played the Rolling Stones. They asked me what you want to put on there. And I, don't know, I, was, I was just feeling it at the time. You know, I'm, I'm a guy I listen to a lot of different different music. I, I like a little bit of everything. And at, at the time, I was feeling some classic rock. They're one of my favorites. So, you know, I just... Put them on. I got you. All right, tell me about the Northern Colorado Bears, if you could. Um, you know, 2022 season coming up. Uh, you know, you look at the coaches' poll, you look at the media poll. Uh, not picked to finish high, but I know you guys are, are hungry to kind of put that behind you and, and, and prove people wrong. Uh, what can we expect from the Northern Colorado Bears this coming fall? Yes, sir. Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, I, th- I think our, our big goal right now is. I mean, we're coming together as a team. This whole offseason has been so good to us. I think. Uh, the whole team is buying in. Every individual is, is really trying to see that this is more than themselves. And um, we preach, be where your feet are. You know, take every day as it comes. And, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm looking forward to that in fall camp because, uh, I mean, realistically, those, those preseason polls don't, don't, mean, don't mean much. Mm-hmm. And uh, we know that, but it's a little fuel to the fire as well. But, I mean, our big focus is right now Houston Baptist. That's our first game, you know, mm-hmm. and, and throughout fall camp we'll start to see that. We'll start to introduce a little bit more of – Wyoming and Lamar, those are our first three games. And then after that, it's, it's big sky play, which everyone here knows is, is tough. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, I mean, the best FCS conference. And I think every, every single game is, is, uh, is going to be a fun game. It's going to be a competitive game. And we're going to find ourselves in a lot of dogfights. And, and I think that'll tell a lot about who we are as people, who we are as a team. I see. David, can you tell me about the defensive side of the ball? What are the Bears going to look like on the, in the, that phase of the game? Phenomenal. Yeah. We're always going to look phenomenal um, as a team, not just as a defense, but as a unit. And, um, the defense is has a bunch of athletic people, you know, um, Vincent King, your Ryan Hudson, uh, R.J. Potts, we, uh, Jordan Jordan Napke is coming back. Mm-hmm. So it's like I am truly excited to have some of these athletes and all of these athletes come together as one and finally show how capable we are. And for that, I'm I'm very excited. All right, man. How's this weekend been as a whole for you guys? Amazing. Yeah. Um, for me, it's amazing because I got to meet a couple, a couple uh, other players, and it made me realize, like, outside of football, these are really good dudes. Uh, even in football, these are really good dudes, and um, it's been an honor uh, to be here, to get invited here, and to come here. And I, I can't wait to see them. You know, I can't wait to see what they have to offer on the field, off the field, and just for us to succeed as individuals. All right, I, uh, yeah, go ahead. Dylan as, as well. Yeah, the, the, weekend, to the weekend. The weekend's been a huge honor for mm-hmm. me. Um, I think it's it's such a cool event they have every single year. It's awesome, like like David mentioned, to meet some of the other guys, put some faces to some numbers. And, uh, I mean, they're all really good dudes, and it's 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 cool just as football as a whole, seeing, you know, mm-hmm. everyone's really out for the same thing. And, and uh, I think it, it's just a cool experience to be here. And, uh, I mean, talk to some of y'all, meet – meet a lot of new people it's it's great for that i know the hall of fame event was was fantastic just hearing a bunch of great athletes speak on you know how they succeeded and i've had a blast with it i've had a really good time 
All right, we're going to dive into some fun questions. I, just, I printed out just a list right. of icebreaker type stuff, so we're going to think a little bit differently than, than X's and O's football stuff. I like stuff. it. Right. I like it. If you could hang out with any cartoon character, who would you choose and why? Mm, that's a good question. There's a lot of good ones. There's a lot of good ones. I think I'm going to go with the original Pink Panther. That guy's just, he's, he's cool. He's slick with it, man. He's, I don't know, I imagine, I don't think he talk much. I don't, I don't love to talk much when I'm meeting new people, but I think uh, you get in some good, good little adventures with that guy. All right, all right. Um, I'm going to go a little bit old school. I would say Huey from Boondocks. Why? <laughs> because um, he, he was definitely in the community, and he was smart. Intelligent wise up here, so I feel like he would teach me a lot of a lot of good things for him. So yeah, this is be... Huey from uh, the Ducktales. No, no, Boondocks. Boondocks. Okay, yeah, was, gotcha. yeah, yeah. yeah, I've watched Boondocks cartoon, before. I love so that show, man. Yeah. yeah. All right, all right, David, Dylan, appreciate you guys so Thank much. You. Thanks for joining us. Good luck this season. Thank you. All right, that's it for the uh, Northern Colorado Bears. We'll be right back at the Big Sky Football Kickoff Media Day with some more student athletes talking about all kinds of random things. We get their helmet on there. The UNC Bears. What's the chant? What's the fight song? All right, all right, we'll get there, we'll get there. All right, I appreciate it, guys. We'll be right back. (laughs) Hey, we're back in Spokane for the Big Sky Conference Football Media Days. I don't know why this is a tongue twister for me. I can't see it. Big Sky Conference Kickoff. Football media days. I don't know. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Having I'm having a little fun. Are you guys having fun this weekend? Great experience. Yeah. And tell me about the experience so far. What's what's been good? I know you guys were at, down at the uh, the clinic on Saturday, Hall of Fame things. What's been the most memorable part for you? I think just seeing all the you know alumni from all the different schools, all the Hall of Famers, mm-hmm. um, and just being a part of history. Uh, you know, it's a great event. They've been taking great care of us, great food, great place to stay. Um, obviously getting to know other people in our conference that we're going to be playing against, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, but basically just relaxing, having a good time, and just taking it all in. Gotcha. You guys want to grab the mic, actually, just pass it back and forth, okay. whoever's talking. Yeah, we're not close enough to that. But um, now tell me about the Sacramento State football team. I mean, 2019 champions of the Big Sky Conference, 2021 champions of the Big Sky Conference. Uh, there were some lean years for the Hornets, you know, but, but prior to Coach Troy Taylor arriving here. What, what's what been the key to, to kind of turning it around and being at the top of the conference and, and creating an offensive juggernaut? Well, I think that starts, obviously, with Coach Taylor and his staff and um, you know, our faculty, our AD, and our president, um, you know, they've really implemented things uh, to help us as student athletes to really enjoy our time, uh, first and foremost, because that, you know, helps it not feel like a job when we show up every day. Um, and they did a great job of recruiting and bringing in guys that really, you know, meant a lot, um, mm-hmm. or football means a lot to them. But obviously, we've had immediate success ever since 2019. So, you know, the previous staff did a great job bringing in guys, you know, like Marte and a lot mm-hmm. of other great players, um, and, and Coach Taylor and his staff really just used some old pieces with some new pieces along with all the support that we have um, in Sacramento um, in order for us to you know, ultimately have that success. He's a great coach, um, great scheme, uh, so we all kind of just bought into the process and believed in one another and then just tried to go out there and execute on the field. Gotcha. Jake, and, uh, you know, I know you're, you're a quarterback for, for the, uh, the Sacramento State Hornets, and uh, it seems like two quarterback systems have kind of been popularized over the last few years. I know you're involved in one as well. You're, you're kind of more the throwing quarterback just from looking at the stats, and you've got a change of pace guy to come in. What's that like for you guys, uh, you know, kind of giving each other breathers? How does a two-quarterback system work? Um, it's interesting. It's, it's, you know, difficult to get used to at first. Um, it's yeah, it's definitely def- difficult to get used to at first, um, but Asher's a great guy, great athlete, um, and, you know, there's never been any an- animosity between the two of us. Um, you know, we're both really good leaders. We both really know what we're doing when it comes to the offense, and we really just try to work, you know, together and feed off one another because ultimately we're here to win games. We're not here to put up crazy stats. Mm-hmm. So it really doesn't matter who's in the game. You know, I have full confidence in him, and he has full confidence in me, and the coaches have full confidence in both of us. You know, we can run anything we want to run with whoever's in there. So, you know, this year we're really working on uh, mixing it up a little bit. You know, obviously we're both going to get some time in there, but we, you know, ultimately expect to be successful and expect to, you know, put points on the board because that's all, you know, that's our job. So, a lot of regular season success uh, for you guys. Maybe not as, as much where you guys want to be in the postseason uh, as far as advancing the FCS playoffs. Uh, Tay, could, could you talk about what's going to take to to get over that hump and, and really make a deep run in the FCS playoffs? You know, I mean, I'm sure you guys have national championship aspirations. 
Yes, sir. It just uh, starts off with the process that gets us to winning the Big Sky uh, in 2019 and 2021. And then just at that point, it's just can we be the better team on every Saturday when the playoffs come to all the way up until what, early January and then come out victorious then. Nothing really changes except uh, now it's an elimination game. But no, there's no added pressure or anything like that. It's just more of a can we execute, can mm-hmm. we perform pretty much. Gotcha. Jake, you got anything to add on that? Yeah. Um, no, not really. Like you said, you know, we take every opponent very seriously and we, you know, we stay in the moment and try to work day to day. So, um, you know, we don't change what we do based on who we play. You know, we're going to practice the same way. We're going to prepare the same way. But like he said, it's just showing up and executing. Um, you know, the last two years, we've just started really, really slow. Mm-hmm. Uh, so really focusing on, you know, uh, coming out fast and, and setting the tone and uh, not getting complacent because now we know what to expect. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's really no no reason to be anxious or nervous or um, fear of the unknown. You know, obviously we're playing great teams in our own conference, so we know what to expect when we get to the playoffs. See. I think you guys have a nationally televised game against the University of Montana on the schedule at some point. I mean, you know, obviously number one, uh, they're picked in both the media and coaches poll. You guys are number two, I think, and number th- maybe three and maybe the other poll. Uh, that's going to be a huge game. What's that going to be like for you guys competing on a national stage and maybe providing some uh, some some uh, uh, exposure for the program? Well, it's great exposure for sure. Obviously, for us as players, you know, our coaching staff and our city. Um, and anytime you can bring a great team in um, and have that kind of exposure and that and that spotlight on us, um, but at home, you know, I think that's a really good advantage for us. And obviously, we played them last year at their place, and we were able to get a big win. But even the year before that, 2019, they came to our place, and you know, we were able to win that game as well. So, you know, that's what we expect. We expect to win these big games. We expect to show up. Um, and and uh, Marte said this, you know, before. It doesn't really change who we're playing, and it, it doesn't change what we have to do when we're on the field. It just changes, you know, the camera angles and the shots they get. So, it doesn't really matter how many cameras there are, or what time we play at, or who we play. It's really about what we do and how we execute. And at the end of the day, we we expect to win. All right, appreciate you joining us. Let's get the fun questions now. All right, you, you got your creative juices flowing yeah. here. All right, pick one at random. <laughs> we're gonna say. Would you rather live in the ocean or on the moon, and why? I'm going to say uh, ocean, just because there's no oxygen on the moon. I mean, unless... unless what if you got a space suit? Well, no, no, I oxygen like it. underwater either. Well, <laughs> I know, but there, there is oxygen underwater. Is. Uh, but okay. look, let me just get some gills going first, and then and then it changes. Yeah. But I mean, have you ever seen the, the moon? Like, there's nobody else to talk to. At least you could turn into Aquaman in the water. That's also, a good point. You no know, sharks to eat you. No sharks on the moon. There's Martin. Well, there's moon Martians. No, that's Mars. So that's what would Mars. be on the moon? Like some sort of I don't know, but, I'm, but I've seen yeah. enough space movies to know that there's, there's <laughs> that's, something that's, that's scary, gonna go man. Wrong. That's scary. All right, that's gonna, that's gonna go uh, all right, Jake. For you, would you rather be the funniest or the smartest person in the room? He's, he's, he's both of them. He's, he's both gonna, of them. He's going to be humble. That's why he's having such a hard time right. making. So speak um, for him. Yeah. I'd want to say funniest because I obviously think that, you know, that's a great trait to have. Uh-huh. But obviously, you know, knowledge is power. So I would want to be smart as well. Right. I wouldn't want to be dumb as rocks. Good I, catch. That's right. for sure. Yeah, you don't – is it an extreme? Because yeah, is it like I can only have one like, and the like other funny, is like – but you're dumb as rocks. Like, yeah. Uh, like a part of the Three Stooges type of <laughs> intelligence. Yeah, I got you. I'd rather just be smart with no humor. All right, I got it. I got it. Okay. All right. Last question I have, just because uh, I want to do something on mascots. You know, you look around. There's bears. There's there's uh, there's Vikings. There's there's grizzlies. There's bobcats. A hornet. In what situation? What scenario would a hornet beat these other mascots in a fight? Um, I think there's power in the, in the pack in the swarm. Uh-huh. So I think in, in any capacity, if you are just outnumbering the other animal or mascot. I think you have a, a really good advantage. So I think, you know, we are the swarm. So I don't know I like how it. a bear like or a Viking would kind of defend themselves against us. I feel Can't like, do it. I feel like, have you ever tried to catch a fly before? That's a good point. That's what uh-huh. I'm saying. So I think the better question to ask is, how are they going to stop us? Yeah. You know uh, what I'm saying? Because we're yeah, so it's small. Like a flood, it's, basically. Yeah, it's just, we come at uh-huh. you from everywhere. It's just a wave. Every old spot. It's just a wave of us, you know what I'm saying?
Well, there you have it. The Hornets are a swarm. They're going to swarm the rest of the Big Sky Conference. Jake, Marte, thanks so much for joining us. Good luck this season. We'll be right back with more from the Big Sky Football Kickoff. Hey, welcome back to Spokane, Washington. It's the Tom and Tommy Show. we got Tommy Mallott, sophomore quarterback for the Montana State Bobcats up here. Tommy, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, Tommy, tell me about this weekend, man. Uh, it, it's been pretty incredible. I know we had the, the clinic on Saturday, the Hall of Fame on Saturday night. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, you guys got a chance to catch up with, like, Dave Dickinson, Jan Stenerud. What was it like for you kind of talking to those big sky football legends about their careers and their histories? Absolutely. Uh... You know, when we first got here, uh, we, we sat down and had some breakfast, and sitting right next to us, uh, you know, Jan Stenerud and his wife. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got an opportunity to talk to him there for a little bit, you know, hear his story, hear, uh, you know, how he actually got the opportunity to, to play football at Montana State, and then go on to get to that 19, you know, year, mm -hmm. 19 years in the NFL. And, you know, it, it was something else. That guy, he, he, he's a great, you know, great conversationalist, and, and it was such a pleasure. Um, and we're, you know, pleasure to meet the meet the guy. It's super special. I see. You know, did you learn anything from those guys? What What's the big takeaway from from your conversations with them? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we got to talk uh, with Jan Senrud, uh, Dave Dickinson, and then Dennis Erickson as well. And all three of those guys, you know, they're they're great, uh, you know, role models for me. You know, as a guy growing up in Montana um, and seeing their successes. And, and so it was great to sit down. You know, they got to talk to us a little bit about, you know, staying where your feet are. Uh, controlling what you can control. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the things that you get to hear from, you know, everybody. But it, it means a lot more when, you know, those guys have been through the fire. Uh, you know, you've seen it, and, and they've, you know, they've performed at the highest level uh, despite, you know, those, those adversities. And, uh, you know, the amount of experience and the knowledge that those guys have, um, it's, un it, you know, it, it, you, can't, you can't doubt those, those experiences, and, and it, it's super special to be able to hear those things, those things from them. Yeah, especially as a guy who's, who's kind of going through it himself right now. I mean, uh, you know, last year you went from backup to, to household name in Montana, magical run through the postseason until an injury in the, in the national championship game. Can you describe what, what that was like going through last season, um, you know, just getting the call, running through the postseason, and then uh, just kind of being Tommy Touchdown? <laughs> Yeah, it's been surreal uh, since since that last game. I uh, have an opportunity to kind of look back to it. But while I was, you know, we were in the thick of it, we were going through those playoffs. It, you know, it's great to be surrounded by the guys that we have in that locker room because, you, you know, everybody's got those expectations that they're that they're willing to, you know, give up or not give up, but they're able to sacrifice for their team. They're they're and they're ready to sacrifice for their team. They're ready to make plays. Uh, you know that they've done the work, and you can trust, uh, you know, each and every single one of them. Um, and it was great, you know, that I was, you know, the individual that had that opportunity at the time. But, uh, you know, it, it's something that, you know, we expect from everybody on our team. And I think that everybody understands that. Um, but through the thick of it, you know, it was just kind of a whirlwind of emotion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were just focused on that next game and there wasn't a whole lot of time to kind of reflect. It was just one after the next after the next. And, you know, then all of a sudden the season was over and uh, it was an unfortunate ending um, for us. And I think we're ready to get back after it. Um, and then since then, it's just... It's uh, it's been crazy, you know how I blew up. It was it was a four game stretch there, and so I'm really excited to come back and and prove you know prove to everyone that you know it wasn't just a four game playoff thing. That you know that I've grown a lot as a quarterback and I have a lot to prove. And mm -hmm. and I think that you know we've had a, a good summer to to try to you know instigate that. I see. You know preseason all conference selection for for quarterback of the year. Do you put any stock to that? Is it pretty flattering? Just kind of you know knowing that that uh, you were voted as such. Yeah, it's certainly flattering that, you know, the people that are, that, are, that are voting for that, you know, they see myself as, as one of those guys in this conference, this great conference, uh, the big sky, uh, so competitive, so many guys. And so, um, you know, I take a lot of value in the, in the respect that I have. And, and it's also, I take a lot of value in the pressure that comes with that and those expectations. Mm -hmm. um, I'm extremely excited to, you know, put to bed maybe some of those uh, ideas that, you know, it was just a, a, a few game thing. And so that's, that's been something on my mind, you know, this entire off season. Um, so I'm very grateful for, for those expectations. And, but, you know, at the end of the game, it's, at the end of the day, it's, it's between those white lines. And so that's what I'm focused on. Um, you know, everyone wants to take care. Those preseason ones are just, a, you know, this really, um, you know, vague crystal ball. But, mm -hmm. you know, the end of the year ones, those, are, those ones are set in stone. So that's what we're all working towards. And, you know, I think we have the team to do it. So I'm excited for it. Gotcha. All right, I'm going to have a fun question real there quick, Tommy. There all right. you go. Yeah, yeah, we're getting into it. Okay, I'm just going to pick one at random. Uh, if you could 
If you could be immortal, what age would you choose to? No, I don't like this one. I'm gonna do a different one here. Um, okay. We're gonna get some good ones here. I promise you. The better ones up front. All right, there you so go. Thanks for the patience. Yeah, no worries. Okay. The zombie apocalypse is coming. Who are the three people you want on your team? The three people that I want on my yeah. team, uh, like from Montana State. Or yeah, we'll, we'll talk. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll draw from the Bobcat roster. We'll, we'll draw from the Bobcat uh-huh. roster. Okay. Well, uh, first and foremost, you know, Coy Steele, uh, you know, Wyoming boy. Um, you know, he knows what he's doing. He, again, uh, you know, we have a Montana boy here, right, uh, with Lane Sumner. Uh, there's two, and number three. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, there's so many. You know. So many guys that know what they're doing and that, that, that would know what to do in that situation right there. Ty would uh, probably be a good one, right, over there? Yeah, heck, yeah, I mean, I'd take Ty for sure. Okay. He's got, yeah. He's got a cool head in the shoulders. So yeah, Absolutely. Seems like yeah, he knows what to do in uh, that. When the horde's coming through, when breaking the, the doors, through, yeah. he'd be like, yeah, smacking heads, uh, we're pushing around. All right. Tom. There you go. I'll take those three then, yeah. <laughs> appreciate it, man. Thanks yeah, so much. Tommy Malott, sophomore quarterback from the Bobcat, uh, Montana State Bobcat football team. Uh, we are just winding down the uh, media show here at the Big Sky Football uh, kickoff media day. We'll be right back with uh, some more student athletes. This time. Nothing this today, nothing, nothing this today. weekend. I mean, I, I, it was eight straight games I think you had an interception last year for the Grizzlies. I, what is that like? I mean, is that basically just the zone? Is that like Steph Curry levels? I mean, what did you feel like going through that streak? Um, yeah, you could say the zone uh-huh. for real. Um, just hard work. And it, it was just um, as crazy as it is to you, it was probably just as crazy to me. It's just <laughs> I put in the work and then seeing things on film, let, uh, let it come into life in front of you. And and to be able to reap the benefits of it and just mm-hmm. go out there in eight straight games, I'm like, that's unprecedented. And I definitely had some time to reflect on it because while I was in the moment, I wasn't really worried about it. Like, my mm-hmm. teammates come up to me, and um, it will be cool to do. But, like, once I got one, I was like, all right, the next one. It's not like I got one. I'm like, all right, I'm cool. Like, the games I got picks, and I was like, all right, let's try to get two. Let's try to get three type <laughs> things. So. Uh-huh. Yeah, just keep it going as yeah. long as possible, man. Yeah, do the deep run. Now, you know, I know you had a, a monster season last year. You, you had a decision whether to come back to the University of Montana. I know you, you potentially had some other opportunities, whether it's pro, whether it's a bigger program. But you did come back to Montana. Why did you do that? What, what is special about the University of Montana program for you? Um, just the people. Um, starting from our coaching staff, uh, being around them, it's, it's felt like family since I've been there. And uh, mm-hmm. I feel like I could call Coach Hawk when anything goes wrong. And I haven't been, I've been different places and it hasn't been like that. So mm-hmm. um, it's cool to be like that. Um, we're here, I'm here with Mitch Roberts, my, one of our teammates, one of the better guys in the locker room. And we just all have, have a good sense of each other. And it's cool being around them. And to be honest, I wasn't interested in no other school, man. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Things are working out the way they're supposed to. And I'm just happy to be a Montana Grizzly. Yeah, and, and you're here, uh, you know, at the Big Sky Football Kickoff Media Day, and, and you know all the other cool events. I mean, we talked a little bit uh, before we came back live about the Hall of Fame ceremony, the, the clinic, getting to chat with some of those legends. You know, Dave Dickinson, Hall of Famer, uh, CFL champion, great quarterback, uh, Jan Stenerud, NFL guy as well. Uh, what were those conversations like? What, what do you take from from hearing those guys' message? Yeah, so um, hopefully want to be a professional athlete myself is just kind of understanding and picking their brain of what they went through, uh, stuff that's going to come up and Mm -hmm. and how they handle situations. And and it's dope just to always get um, feedback from them. They've been through it. They know they've also came from Montana or Montana State, so it's the smallest school, so they know what to Mm -hmm. expect for me going forward in the future. So um, it was cool. They gave guys around Big Sky, they gave us all like some insight on on like what they've been through in their stories and it's always cool to hear and, and kind of puts a picture for you of what's all possible with hard work yeah just kind of keep your, your the, the main thing the main thing keep exactly. moving forward all right justin we got fun questions we're going to end with one of those uh let's see here i'm going to pick out a good one okay no i don't like that one if you had to eat one meal every day for the rest of your life what would it be and why that's a hard question because <laughs> um, I'm a food guy. Like, okay. I, I eat a oh, lot. foodie, huh? Yeah. All right. But it would have to be probably some sort of steak, I feel like, because you could do a lot with that. Uh-huh. Um, I would say pizza, but to be honest, I eat a lot of pizza, and I get tired of it, so I couldn't be pizza. That's okay. just too basic. What's your favorite pizza if, uh, um, from where? 
I keep it basic. So I was okay. born in New York. We are big on cheese and pepperoni. Um, I'm a cheese. I'm a cheese. That's it. What brand? Um, I don't hear. I go to Pie Hole in Montana. Pie Hole, okay, in Missoula. The, yeah, that's oh, the Pie Hole. I've been there. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the best uh-huh. pizza spot in town. So that's where I go. I'm a, I'm a pizza guy. All right. So every day for the rest of your life, Pie Hole pizza, pepperoni. We're gonna go with that. Pepperoni. Yeah. yeah. All right. That works, man. Justin, I appreciate you joining us. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Good Thank luck you. this season, Justin Ford, uh, defensive back for the University of Montana Grizzlies. We are winding down this uh, media show, this live interview session with some of these student athletes. We will wrap things up pretty soon when we get back after the break. Hey, welcome back to the Big Sky Football Kickoff Media Day. Tom Wiley here, joined by another one of my good friends and colleagues, Miss Ashley Washburn (laughs) from KBZK in Bozeman, Montana, expert on all things Montana State football, Bobcats. But, well, we've been in here talking to coaches and student athletes and administrators. Ashley and Kyle have been in the back room uh, getting to know some of these players and coaches a little bit more. Ashley, tell me about who you've talked to and what are some of the things you've learned so far here uh, on Media Day. Absolutely. First up, we talked to Northern Arizona. One guy that absolutely sticks out to me is Anthony Sweeney. Coming off an insane injury last year, uh, had to watch from the sidelines. He's coming back for redemption, but he's been so blessed with being off the field for the last year Mm -hmm. because it's taught him a different level of the game, and it's made him a better leader because of it. So, you know, we're talking a little bit more than just football. We're talking off the field stuff. Um, After that, we talked to UC Davis. UC Davis, there's a graphic designer, and we were talking about how that connects to, you know, being a little bit more creative on defense. Uh He's a linebacker. He's like, you can't play stagnant defense. You've got to be creative in different situations. He's like, graphic design has helped me that. I'm like, things you would have never thought about. Um, but we're just talking a little bit more than just football. I mean, I think that's the greatest thing about these athletes, is, and especially in the big sky. All these kids have such amazing stories, and football is a big part of their life, but, you know, there's, there's a reason behind they do what they do. Absolutely. And we're going to take that footage, those interviews, and we're going to intersperse them throughout our broadcast in the fall of Big Sky Conference football games. Uh, we got a lot of Montana State, Montana games, but, but all the teams are kind of coming through there. I think there's maybe one or two teams that aren't going to get a broadcast for a script. So we're going to intersperse some of those interviews so you can get to know some of these players as we get there. And, um, you know, as you look towards this fall, Ashley, you've seen the media polls, you've seen the coaches' polls, you've seen the all-conference teams. Uh, how thrilled are you? What, what stands out to you? What are you most looking forward to for the fall of 2022? Well, I think the biggest thing and I love talking to these coaches because they're even telling me they're like these preseason polls mean nothing and I'm like that's true and you know you look at how preseason polls were last year and they were not even how the season ended up finishing out Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing that I'm looking for and I keep saying this and I think they're a sleeper to me is NAU I really think NAU could go out there and be a great team they've got pretty much their entire same offense their entire same defense um, and they're bringing back a lot of talent, and I think that says a lot. And their coach is super excited. They've got Anthony Sweetie, I talked about him, mm-hmm. great, great, great defensive player. And so it's just, I think that's the fun thing. You see everybody come out here, and it's getting you excited for September 3rd. Yeah, we, we talked with the NAU players a little earlier. I think they both said their favorite sandwiches were uh, Jersey Mike's. That's not neither here nor there, but... Yeah, maybe I don't that know will if make I the agree broadcast. With Jersey Mike's, but you know, I'm a Jimmy John's gal. Yeah, I'm Jimmy also Jones. a Jimmy John's yeah. gal. We just got Jersey Mike's in Great Falls, Montana. Oh, there so, you go. Yeah, yeah, we're going back and forth. All right, Ashley, I know you have a, a number of other interviews to do left. Uh, chatting with the Montana State Bobcats, we just got off with Tommy Millot as well, uh, and I didn't ask him about it, but but he's been doing some DJ stuff. Is that right? <laughs> uh, there's a little bit. Yeah, I know. Um, I asked him if he has a DJ name, and he said he didn't have one. So we kind of started brainstorming some ideas. Mm-hmm. Uh, Touchdown Tommy obviously was a household name last year, so I'm telling. Like, run with double T. That could be his little DJ name. But he's doing a little bit. I think um, he's very humble, so he doesn't like to talk about that he's stepping out of his box a bit. <laughs> but, no, he's, he's got a great story, and I think I'm really excited to talk about, you know, where he is this fall compared mm-hmm. to where he was last year. I mean, last year I was talking to Ty Okada. Ty was even saying, like, he was just trying to find reasons to get on the field, mm-hmm. whether it was running back, wide receivers, special teams. Very different situation this fall. He's going in as QB1. Um, and there's got to be a little bit more, you know, pressure, but also a little bit more comfortability. Yeah, yeah, I think having a full fall camp to be the number one guy mm-hmm. is certainly going to help. All right, a- Ashley, thanks for joining us. Uh, I know you got more me. interviews to do. Uh, you, she'll be front and center for some of these scripts broadcast of Montana State football games later this fall. Uh, we'll be right back to close things out for our interview show here at the Big Sky Football Media Kickoff Day thing. All right, be right back. (laughs) 
Well, the room is pretty much cleared out. I was going to shut it down by myself, but I, I saw Ty Okada, uh, Montana State football player, standing aside, and he's an entertaining guy. We, we saw him yesterday in the, the photo media video room, just uh, kind of having a good time, supporting his teammates, being a good dude. So I'm going to ask you one silly question, and that'll do it. Okay, so we're going to do, you have your own late-night talk show. <laughs> Who would you invite as your first guest? Oh, gosh, that would have to be... Tiger Woods. I'm just getting into golf, right? I'm just getting into golf. He's he's an interesting guy. He's obviously a legend. Mm-hmm. Um, love to get some more insight, work on my game. I'd have to kind of just take advantage of his knowledge. And so I would just selfishly bring him on to my talk show just to talk golf. I, I, I definitely have a lot of areas that I need to improve upon in my golf game. So that's who it would be. All right. In 10 words or less, how would you describe the Bobcats' upcoming 2022 season? Definitely just hungry. Hungry, we have a lot to prove, and, and, and we're just extremely excited, hungry, and, and those would definitely be the two words. That's over ten words. Sorry. Or two, two words. Too that hungry works. and excited. All right. Sorry. I apologize. You're right. No, that's good. You're right, man. I appreciate it. Okay, well, that'll do that for us here at the Big Sky Football Kickoff Media Day. We've talked to athletes. We've talked to coaches, administrators. We've had a great time, but this is just a taste of things to come. Scripps Networks across our footprint. We're talking San Luis Obispo, uh, Boise. We're talking Phoenix. We're going to be broadcasting a lot of these Montana and Montana State football games featuring Big Sky Conference team. So I hope you join us this fall. We have all kinds of things in store for you. But for now, we're going to close things down here. We're basically closing down. It feels like 2 a.m. to me uh, at the Big Sky Conference Football Media Day. Thank you for joining us over the past two hours. We'd love to see you back here in the fall. Good night, everyone. Good afternoon, whatever it is.